forward and back. Forward and back. Right. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Well, thank you, Brian. And uh, it's been a pleasure participating in CAPN over the last uh, couple of years. Uh, and uh, our applications are very different than what you've seen so far. Uh, while well, you actually got a glimpse of what we're trying to accomplish through the, through the earlier presentation where we collaborate with Dr. Uh, Liu. So uh, our goal is actually uh, to uh, uh, utilize uh, edible biological materials and uh, to come up with uh, value-added applications for, for these edible uh, nanomaterials. So, um, we have several projects uh, ongoing at the same time. Uh, the first one focuses on developing unique uh, surface structures with varying properties. Uh, and uh, in particular, we're trying to uh, uh, come up with uh, biodegradable materials that have varying adhesion properties uh, by, by changing uh, their surface topography naturally. And uh, the, uh, the second component of our work focuses on uh, better biodegradable edible films, again, from agricultural and food origin. Uh, you saw uh, in Dr. Lu's work, the, uh, the work we're doing focused on uh, microfluidic platforms. Uh, and now we're looking for, uh, we're in the process of utilizing uh, these microfluidic platforms to actually uh, do some uh, RNA and DNA uh, separations. Uh, and, uh, and finally, uh, we're focusing on uh, some sensors work uh, and then building unique structures uh, in the form of nanotubes and nanoparticles, again, from uh, edible materials and particularly uh, proteins and carbohydrates. So, um, so this basically uh, uh, is the first part of our work. Uh, and uh, uh, these particular nanostructures uh, that we measure uh, utilizing atomic force microscopy uh, give us the ability to do a number of different things. Uh, first of all, uh, as you have seen again earlier uh, in uh, Dr. Lu's work, uh, the uh, cell adhesion properties of Zane films dramatically change with uh, uh, the uh, density and size of surface asperities. And these are naturally formed surface asperities, uh, uh, surface needles, if you will. Uh, and uh, their topography changes essentially depending on uh, what kinds of uh, fractions uh, uh, we harvest from Zane. Uh, Zane, again, is the low molecular weight protein of corn. Uh, and uh, you can see here uh, the surface topography that one gets with uh, uh, alpha zane, uh, but the, surf the surface topography with the beta fraction of zane uh, is uh, dramatically different. So uh, we also um, have looked at uh, the effect of different uh, uh, purifications and separation methodologies. Uh, there are uh, a couple of ways in which one can uh, separate uh, Zane. Uh, and uh, one, uh, one method utilizes acetic acid as a solvent. Uh, and the other one utilizes different fractions of ethanol with 95% ethanol essentially uh, giving the most pronounced uh, topography. Uh, and uh, you can pretty much see that uh, when we uh, separate Zane utilizing acetic acid, there is uh, uh, fundamentally uh, very low uh, sized asperities on the surface, uh, but separating it with 95% ethanol creates a very different surface. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the addition of these two surfaces uh, and the ability to bind cells with each one is also dramatically, uh, significantly different. So uh, we also are able to change the uh, uh, surface uh, hydrophobicity uh, of the Zane surfaces. And by uh, applying UV ozone treatment, uh, you can see basically that we start with uh, a highly hydrophobic protein. And then with increasing uh, UV ozone uh, treatment, uh, the surface becomes progressively hydrophilic. 
uh, ultimately becoming, uh, you know, mostly mostly hydrophilic. Uh, so this again gives us uh, uh, biodegradable edible options uh, with different surface properties, and we can cover the range from a relatively uh, hydrophobic material to a relatively hydrophilic material. Um, so the next uh, area is actually the utilization uh, uh, of nano-sized clays to alter the properties uh, of Zane. Uh, Zane is one of the most promising uh, biodegradable film materials, uh, and there are very few choices out there. Uh, so what we have done is essentially uh, load Zane with, uh, oops, uh, load Zane with uh, uh, nanoclays, uh, and uh, uh, depending on the type of fabrication, uh, and the actual dispersion that occurs during fabrication, uh, the properties uh, change rapidly, uh, and, uh, and clay uh, pretty much uh, can stay uh, in a phase-separated uh, mode uh, versus a somewhat phase-separated intercalated mode or a completely exfoliated mode which, uh, where, uh, where uh, the nanoclay is completely dispersed. Uh, and you can see here uh, relative to, um, uh, this is an X-ray diffraction uh, uh, curve, and uh, uh, the, uh, uh, this particular curve is essentially uh, the nanoclay that has not yet been dispersed, uh, and we see uh, a, an aggregation peak. Uh, and then uh, with, in particular with extrusion blown films, that uh, aggregation completely disappears. Uh, and we have in some areas intercalated uh, Montmorillonite or clays, and in, uh, in other areas essentially uh, completely exfoliated uh, nanoclays. Uh, and uh, you know, these basically show uh, uh, the different uh, transmission electron microscopy images. Uh, so uh, now we come to uh, uh, the development of uh, microfluidic platforms uh, utilizing corn zane. Uh, and we've done uh, a, a lot of work with uh, Dr. Lu's group, uh, uh, essentially uh, looking to uh, uh, utilize soft lithography to create the appropriate uh, uh, channel patterns uh, on Zane surfaces. Uh, and then, uh, you know, one of the key issues, of course, is uh, the, the seal, uh, the ability to seal uh, the particular microfluidic uh, device. Uh, so we have considered uh, Zane to Zane seals. Uh, and uh, the, the seal uh, was created essentially by vapor deposition of ethanol. Uh, and when you, um, uh, you know, uh, when you actually um, uh, take a scanning electron micrograph uh, uh, of a uh, vapor uh, deposited uh, uh, zane to zane uh, surface, uh, essentially there's comp a complete fusion of one zane layer onto the other one. Uh, and we have also looked at uh, Zane to uh, glass uh, uh, microfluidic devices. Uh, and again, you know, you have seen essentially how the system works. Uh, uh, at this point in time, uh, we are also collaborating with uh, uh, Nano Inc. to actually come up with uh, surface et etching using uh, ethanol so that we have a complete uh, biodegradable process and not utilize PDMS uh, in order to form these particular channels. Uh, and as I said earlier, we're very much interested in uh, uh, utilizing this platform for different applications. And a couple of areas uh, that uh, we are starting with is uh, RNA uh, and DNA extraction using these microfluidic devices. Uh, another, uh, another area that we have been focusing on is to create uh, uh, photonic properties on Zane. Uh, and uh, uh, depending again on the type of uh, uh, surface uh, that we are able to create, uh, and, and this is really Dr. Lu's uh, uh, expertise, uh, we can actually alter the color of Zane uh, in this particular case with these uh, pyramid shaped like uh, nano sized structures. We are able to create uh, uh, yellowish uh, green colors. Uh, and uh, by reducing the size considerably, uh, we can now make uh, Zane purple. Uh, and that leads uh, to the development of sensors uh, uh, utilizing uh, these uh, biodegradable materials. Uh, and uh, uh, in one of these devices, uh, uh, as my colleague mentioned earlier, uh, we're very much interested in 
uh, coming up uh, with a device that will be able to detect soybean cyst nematode. Uh, uh, and uh, in order to create that detection process, uh, we are focusing uh, on this uh, uh, lipid binding protein uh, and, uh, and manufacturing that lipid protein in uh, E. coli. Uh, and uh, our goal is to use surface enhanced uh, uh, Raman spectroscopy uh, by um, essentially creating uh, these uh, surface structures uh, gold-plated surface structures on Zane, uh, and then obtain uh, uh, SERS uh, uh, patterns. Uh, and, and you can see pretty much uh, uh, how in a, with a model material, uh, we can get uh, excellent uh, differentiation between the two different signals. Uh, and we have used this also for detection of pathogens uh, uh, like E. coli and Salmonella. Uh, and the technique appears to be uh, very uh, uh, very effective. Another uh, application is uh, uh, the utilization of quantum dots to actually uh, conjugate them uh, to antibodies uh, and then find the various proteins within food systems. Uh, and in this particular example, we are focused on gliadine, the low molecular weight protein in dough, and we're looking at the distribution of gliadine in dough as a function of processing of dough and also as a function of baking in different uh, products, uh, food products like bread. Uh, and uh, this gives us the ability basically to understand the role of protein distribution on structure formation. Uh, in other areas, the formation of uh, bio-based nanotubes. Uh, and you can see here uh, nanotubes that we have created using uh, BSA and polydilysine, uh, uh, which is a cationic uh, uh, biopolymer. Uh, and finally, we are very much interested in creating many different nanoparticles from food proteins uh, like gliadine, like BSA. Uh, you've seen examples with Zane uh, and uh, encapsulate uh, various bioactive, uh, uh, bioactive uh, compounds. Uh, and you know, this shows you that with gliadine, we're able to do that. Uh, and that pretty much gives you a quick overview of the kinds of things that we have been doing in our lab. Okay. Thanks very much, Joe. My pleasure. Sorry I took two more minutes than everybody <laughs> else. Okay, so I think we have uh, one more presentation uh, for, for this afternoon.